In this video, we're going to take a look at how the Python F string can help produce a random color code that we then can use within our Python programs that use TK Inter. The last program in this playlist looked at this computer program and here you can see we have a function that is capable of generating a random color code and we return here the color code to this position in the program. Here we have a loop that sends us round and round a number of times and what it will do is produce a computer program that will perform the task that I'll show on the next slide. Now you can see that what we have is a window containing a canvas and within the canvas we are drawing a number of lines of varying lengths, of varying thicknesses in different positions and of a random colour. Now we have considered the operation of this function in the previous two videos in this playlist on TK Inter. And if I briefly look at the algorithm for this, it involves us creating a list that is a list of the figures you would expect to see in a hexadecimal number. Here I assign to colour code this symbol and then we have a loop and every time we go around this loop we choose from this list one of the hexadecimal figures and at the end of the execution of this loop which we will go around six times we will have a colour code that consists of this symbol plus six of these chosen at random by this choice function here. Now it's often the case when you write a computer program you review it and you say to yourself I wonder if I can choose another way to produce a random number rather than this algorithm here. Is there a better way? Is there a way in which I can use less lines of code? Is there a way that will perform this task quicker? A faster runtime? Well in the latest versions of Python, you will have known that there has been the introduction of something referred to as the F string. And what I'm going to do here is to look to see how I can produce a random color code using the F string. So if we take a look at this function and let's replace it, and I'm going to replace it with the following function that has the same name, but it has a different algorithm. And the algorithm is going to replace this bit of the code here. So here you can see the function. And what we are doing is on this line, I am assigning to this variable color code this slot. Now I'll say this slot at the moment because what this will do, it'll generate a random color code which it will assign to here. And on this line you can see we still have the return of the color code. So if we come down to this program here, you can see in this position we still have random color code and that is going to invoke this function and this function will produce a random color code that it'll return to this position. Now I'm going to look at how this works in a moment. But if you look carefully, you can see that I'm assigning this, whatever it produces, which will be the random color code to this variable. And on this line, I'm returning that variable. Now I can reduce the code for this further as shown here. And what I've done, I've simply returned this. I haven't bothered assigning this to a variable and then returning that variable. I've put it straight here. So you can see that this function now only has one line and if you remember the one we looked at a moment ago had a number of lines and it was based upon the use of a list and the choice function and we chose different characters from the list to build up in a loop the random color code whereas here we're doing it with just one line. If we so wished, we needn't bother putting this inside a function. We could simply place this in this position here, removing this call to the random underscore color underscore code function. In other words, if I remove this and remove this, but place this in this position, as you will see on the following slide, what we now have in the program statement where we create the line, you can see I have placed this F string and I have not got a call to the function that we were discussing a moment ago. The only trouble with this approach, if you look at this and you've never seen this kind of cryptic looking piece of code before, you may say, 
well, what's this doing? That's why it's often better to place this in a function, give that function a sensible name, so when you come back to read your own code or read somebody else's code, you can see in this position something sensible which tells you what, in fact, it is doing. So let's now consider the three functions that are capable of generating a random colour code. This is the first one we looked at in the previous two videos, and we can see this uses a list and continually adds characters in a loop until you get the colour code. We then went on to have a look at this one here, which used an F string to generate a random colour code, assign it to here, and then we return that variable on this line. We further went on to reduce the number of lines as shown here, and we simply return what this F string produces. And of course, all these three perform exactly the same function, they will produce a colour code that can be returned, but they do it differently. This one here uses this algorithm and these two use this. Now the line of code responsible for invoking the random colour code function is shown here and you can see it in this position. So this, depending on which one you've used, will execute this function or this may, when you change the program, execute this function or again, if you change the program, this may invoke this function. And whatever is returned to here, it is assigned to this named argument and then you get a particular colour of line. Of course, what we can do, we can remove this here and not have a function to be called. And the line that does that is shown here. And in this position, we have the F string, which will generate a random color code, and that's then assigned to fill. So if we use this line, we needn't bother writing any of these functions. However, have a look at this and compare it to this. For this, there is no mistaking what it does. It returns a random colour code. Whereas this, it's cryptic and it's not necessarily a good idea to have a cryptic bit of code in this way. It's fine to have it here in this function and in this function because you've given the function a sensible name. Of course, you will have to know how this works eventually when you start debugging your code if something goes wrong. But once you know that you've got a function that will generate generate a random colour, you use it all the time. So you test this one, for example, to make sure it always returns a random colour code. You stick it in a module, and every time you wish to generate a random colour code, you use this name here in the knowledge that it has been fully tested. Or you go over to the object-orientated paradigm, and this then would become a method defined within an appropriate class. This is the F string that will produce the random color code, the hexadecimal color code that we can use when we decide to create lines of random colors in the program that we've looked at in this video. Before I explain how this works, what I would like to do is to break down some of its component parts in small segments of code so we can gain a full understanding of how this will produce a random hexadecimal color code. So we'll go on to look at some small segments of code to help us understand, for example, what this means here. Before we look at these small segments of code, I would like to remind you of the number systems that computer programmers use. We have the Deanery number system, which is the one we use in everyday life, numbers from 0 through to 9, and we have the binary number system, which consists of zeros and ones, and we have the hexadecimal number system that consists of the character 0 to 9, and then we have A, B, C, D, E, F, where A represents 10, F represents 15 and so on. So if we consider this table and we have a look at this one here, we can see that 
in deanery we have eight in binary eight looks like this and in hexadecimal eight looks like this and if we look to see how i can put these into a computer program in deanery binary and hexadecimal i've shown it here if we look at var one i've made that equal to eight now that means that var one is storing a deanery number of eight this line if you have a look i've got one zero 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 here and that is taken from this entry and it represents 8 but so I can tell Python look I'm entering in my program code here a binary number you put these two symbols here which is a 0 and a B if you look to this line where var 3 has been assigned this hexadecimal number which is shown here in front of it I've put 0 X and the 0 X tells Python that this is the hexadecimal value of 8 and this line and simply prints each of the variables out and when we look at that output which is shown here you can see that everything is outputted as 8 because what Python is doing is outputting things in deanery not in any of the other number systems there all those three eighths are output as deanery numbers if we go on and look at this entry we have 10 in deanery that looks like this in binary and in hexadecimal it is a so if i now wanted to create three variables storing these numbers in their appropriate number systems i would do this see var1 is 10 which is 10 it may look like a binary number that but it's 10 it's this number here then i got var2 which is 1010 but to tell python it's binary i've got a 0b in front of it this one i've got a here and to tell python look this is a hexadecimal number you put in front of it 0x and this line now will print out the values of var1 var2 and var3 and if we look at that you can see 10 although here for var3 i assigned this when i printed it here it gave me 10 because it decided python decided to give me the output in deanery not in hexadecimal even though here i assigned it as hexadecimal if we now go on to look at this one which is 15 in deanery that's what 15 looks like in binary and f represents 15 in hexadecimal and if we look at the code for this you can see it here there's the 15 this is the binary 15 there's the ob in front of it and here you can see we have the ox and the f so that represents 15 and when we print all three out you can see they're all 15 because it outputs in deanery now let's have a look at this one and here you can see i've got 65535 which looks like this in binary and is four f's as you can see here in hexadecimal if i now decide to assign these values to variables in python you can see that here there's var1 equaling the deanery number here is var2 those are all of the ones look in front you've got the ob representing binary and here you can see you've got the four f's and in front you've got the zero x which is telling us that we're dealing with hexadecimal and consequently when we print this lot out what you're going to get is this you're going to get the deanery number output the 65535 65530 in each case so deanery assigned binary assigned hexadecimal assigned output all deanery let's move on and look at this segment of code and on this line you can see that var1 is assigned 65535 in deanery now what this line does it prints out the value of var1 and it prints the type of var1 which should tell us that it is an integer because this is an integer number now on this line what i am doing you can see var2 is being assigned this now this is where i'm beginning to introduce the f string to you what this is saying is everything between here is going to be a string everything between these quotes and the f is there because this is one of the new features for the latest versions of python which will turn things into a string now these braces these curly brackets here are taking in var1 which is this number here so that number which is an integer is placed in these 
braces and is going to be converted into a string. Now what this line will do is print out var2 and its type. And its type should be a string. So if we look at the runtime for this, what we're going to see is this. And you can see that this line, which prints out var1, prints out this value, which is what we would expect. And this prints out the type of var1, which is telling us it's of class int, which means its type is integer. And this line prints out var2. And if you look, it's the same number. But what you have to realize is that's a string, because when you look here, you can see it's telling us that its class is a string, because this is telling us that the type of var2 is a string. Let's now consider this computer program. And again, I'm assigning to var1 65,535, outputting it here, and also its type. But on this line, if you look, I've altered the f string by introducing these. I've got a colon and a zero and an x. And that is telling us that the value of var1 is to be converted to the hexadecimal number system before it's converted to a string. So when we look at the runtime for this, this line gives us out the 65,535 and the type of var1, which is um, an integer type. And this line will take the 65,535. Because of this here, it'll convert the value of var1 to hexadecimal and convert it to a string. So when we look here, var2 is this, 4f's. Now 4f's is the hexadecimal representation of 65,535. And when we look at the type of var2 here, you can see it is a string. So what this has allowed us to do is to take the value of var1, which is expressed here in deanery, convert it to hexadecimal because of these symbols, and and then convert it to a string, and we get the FF, FF. Let's take our understanding of the F string a little bit further. And here what you can see, I've chosen a different number. I've said, let's make var1 equal 255. Now, 255 in hexadecimal is FF. And what we can see here, I have a number of print statements. So let's have a look at the output for this computer program, which is shown here. And on this line, we're printing out var1 after it's been converted to hexadecimal as a string and we get ff. Let's now go to this line before I discuss the other two above. And here what you can see, I've changed this to 0, 03x, whereas here it was 0x. And when we look at the output from this, it's shown here. And what this 0, 03 is telling us, I want the hexadecimal representation to be three characters. And of course, it doesn't want to change the value of what the hexadecimal number is. So the way in which it does that, it puts a zero in this position. And zero FF is still 255. This one, well, of course, this is going to give us four figures for the hexadecimal representation of 255. And of course, that's shown here. And these two zeros are being put in the front. And here, well, that's obviously going to be five characters for the hexadecimal value, which is shown here. And we still have the value being FF, but it puts these three leading zeros here because they don't have any value in the number, the F and the F do. And here, well, that's six. And you can see this is what we have. We have zero, 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 F. F. So when we come back to here, which is 0, 1, that's saying we want the hexadecimal value output to just be one character. But if you have a look at it, it makes it 2 as the output. Because Python says, well, I know you're telling me you only want it to be of one character, but I'm afraid the number is bigger than one character, so I'm going to ignore this, and I'm still going to output the full value of var1 in hexadecimal as a hexadecimal string as ff. So let's now return to this f string. And one of the things I would like us to consider is this. That's zero. This is clearly a hexadecimal number because it's got zero x here. And it's got, as you look here, six hexadecimal figures. FF, FF, FF. Now, we know that the biggest hexadecimal code we can have for color is FF, FF, FF. And that's what this is 
representing. And of course, I'm going to emphasize that fact by changing these figures here into the colors that they would represent in a hexadecimal color code. And you can see that these two represent the red component, the green component, and the blue component. And if we look at these two, you can see that in these brackets, because they are the input to this function here, the rand int function, which is capable of producing a random integer from this value, zero, all the way up to this very big number here, which just happens to be shown in hexadecimal. So what this is going to give us, I'm going to choose what it could possibly give us, because obviously it's going to give us a random number. It gives us this. And of course, it's given us this in deanery, not in hexadecimal. The fact that this is hexadecimal here doesn't bother Python in the sense that it says, right, well, I know you're giving me this as a hexadecimal number, but I'm going to give you back a decimal number. So what we have to do, we use this here now to convert this into hexadecimal. And furthermore, we are asking it to be of six figures. That's why I've got zero six here. So what this will be when we convert it to a hexadecimal string will be this number here. And this is the hexadecimal representation of the deanery number that we saw a moment ago. Now, what I'd like to point out is that this is inside these braces, these curly brackets, which means that this is the value. And what the F string is doing, it's taking that value between these braces and it's adding to it this. And in fact, what will happen, this is placed down first, and then this value is placed immediately after it, because if we look where the quotes are, they're here. So the string is made up of this and what this returns. And of course, we've seen that this returns this value. So what this will give us is shown here. And of course, if you look at that, that's the red, the green, and the blue component. And if this program statement were to execute again, then obviously this would give us a different random integer and that different random integer would give us a different hexadecimal code here so we can see that this f string will give us random color codes and it's based upon us generating a random number here between zero and this hexadecimal number here which if we converted to deanery we would see it's over 16 million because of course when we're dealing with hexadecimal color codes we know it has 16 million plus possible values if you wanted you could put here the deanery number and you just need to find out what the deanery number is for ff 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 or if you were daft enough you could put them in as binary numbers and of course if they were binary numbers this would be a very long list of ones and for every figure you can see there there'd be four ones 24 bits there so going back to the program we've been discussing there you can see the program with the original function then we went on with this function here which used the f string and of course we found out that we could even reduce this to one line instead of the two shown here which is this function and there is the f string and hopefully now you can see how that f string will produce a random color code a random hexadecimal color code as a string because when you call it from here the fill is expecting to see a string a hexadecimal string and that hexadecimal string will represent the colour that the line will be drawn in. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.